Today I'm going to share with you how you can ride Highline Trail in Sedona with confidence and control. Welcome, my name is Roxy and I'm here in Sedona today. It's a beautiful February day and we have a beautiful view to all the amazing red rocks here. Highline is one of my favorite trails here in Sedona. Today I want to share which skills you need to ride all the technical downhill sections on Highline Trail. The parking lot where we parked and where we're starting and also where the loop of today ends is linked below in the video description. There are not many spots available so make sure to either arrive early or to come on a day which is not the weekend because otherwise you're not going to find a spot. Also, you will need a day pass to park here, but there's a machine right by the parking lot. Let's get going, peeps. The first part of this loop is uphill riding and it's pretty technical and demanding uphill riding because it's very chunky so you need a lot of strength and also technique to ride it and most of all it is exposed so it's very narrow and the side of the trail is totally off camber you don't want to fall down there which means don't ride this trail if you're scared of heights or generally scared of exposed trails however check out the views We have arrived to the top of the trail, which is the entry of Highline Trail. And it's funny because I just met one of my watchers. He watched my hangover video and said, hey, if she can ride it, then I can ride it and rode it and discovered that it wasn't as easy as it looked. It took him about 20 minutes uphill to get here. He's a pretty fit rider. It took us about 45 minutes, including filming. So if you want to challenge yourself, and practice those techie uphill sections, then I'd say plan about 45 to 60 minutes. So back to what he said. He said, hey, if she can ride it, I can ride it. Be cautious about that. For one thing, I've been coaching for 10 years full time, which means it's my job to make things look easy. It's my job to make those sections look easy. Otherwise, it would mean that I'm not confident about my skills yet. So if it looks easy on the video, then it may not be that easy when you get there. That was point number one that I wanted to make. Point two I wanted to make is that today I'm going to show you how to ride this trail with confidence and control. So this is not about riding this trail as fast as possible. It's about building up confidence and control first and about mentioning the skills you need to ride this section with control. The first part of this trail, which is the entry of the trail, is actually already a pretty tricky one. And I just heard one of the riders say, I always clip my derailleur on this rock. 
So let's look at the first section first, and I'm going to show you two ways to ride this section with control. We're at the start of the trail and the first rock roll you have, it's not a big one, but it's not straight. So you don't approach it at a 90 degree angle. If you'd ride it here, you would approach it like this. And that makes it not only hard for the head, but also hard because your front wheel may slip or it may turn. The easiest line here is actually here through this. So you can see some people have already put stones in it. However, then you need to take a big sweeping corner before entering it. I'm going to show you that one first. The second one is riding the roll down. And I'm going to show you one version of doing this with a mini nose pivot. So actually placing the rear wheel down after I've rolled down with my front wheel because I want to make a point. A lot of people want to learn nose pivot turns or stoppy turns. So riding the corner on their front wheel and the rear wheel is swinging around and they think they need huge nose pivots or stoppy turns to ride this. Just to make a point, nose pivot is with a stopped front wheel, stoppy turn is with a rolling front wheel. And a lot of people think they need to make huge swings with their rear wheel. But actually, for this skill to be practical on a trail, it's fine if you're able to move your rear wheel just a few centimeters, so a few inches with control. That's what will make this skill really useful on a trail. So here's me riding the section with a small nose pivot turn. I'm standing here hiding from the wind because it's a really windy day and also obviously I don't want to stand on the trail in case someone comes. This first rock roll here which comes, there's a ride around which is much easier but this one is perfect to practice for everything else that is going to come. The goal of this rock roll, of riding this rock roll, should be to ride it slowly and in control. Meaning, you want to get low in front of the rock roll, modulate both brakes and ride it down slowly in a balanced position, meaning you want to have your weight on your feet. On my Patreon channel, I'm going to share some common errors 
and how to correct these. So if you want to support me or if you want to find out more, then find my Patreon link right here and then you'll, you can learn much more there. Most people, they just ride it down full throttle and they're not really in control of the bike. It's not a problem here, not at all. But then imagine if this rock roll is double in length or triple in length or in the middle of the rock roll there are technical features or it's loose. That's when it becomes a problem. So I have heard a lot of times, hey, speed is your friend. It is until it's not. And these rock rolls here, especially in Sedona, because they're super grippy, are perfect to practice exactly that. To ride it slow, practice brake modulation, practice your balanced position through the feet, and practice keeping control over your wheels without skidding wheels. Now you'll see me ride this rock roll section, deliberately riding it slowly and in control. That's the goal, to practice for steeper, longer, tackier sections. This is the section you just followed me down and we're going to walk it up now because usually the camera flattens out stuff and when we're walking it up you might see how steep it really is. And now we come to that point that I've mentioned before. If you're a friend of letting go of the brakes and just rolling it out, it can be dangerous because at the end of the section there's a cliff. You're seeing it right now. So you don't want to just be able to ride this section if you're letting go of the brakes. You want to be able to ride this section slowly because one day it's not going to be possible to ride the section quickly because for example after the section there could be a switchback or a cliff. Let's walk the section up and talk about the skills you need to ride this in control. I think you may be able to see how steep it is now. The amazing thing about these rocks here in Sedona is that they are super grippy. So you can trust your front brake a lot and you need to trust your brakes and especially your front brake. The steeper it gets, the more front brake you need to control your speed. That's a common misconception that people think when it's steep, I don't want to touch my front brake. Eh, wrong. If you do that, if you're a predominantly rear brake breaker, you'll get faster and faster on this section. Sorry, kind of out of breath because it is steep. Okay, so let's walk up here now. This first section is not only super steep, but it's also of camber. So brake modulation once again comes into play and something that I call pressure control. Pressure control, I'm gonna link a video for you right here, is controlling the traction on your wheels. I'm gonna come down because of the wind, but I think you saw how steep it is, right? As I was saying, pressure control is the skill to control your traction on your wheels by doing many moves with your hips and controlling that traction through the feet. So you stay balanced through the feet with little weight 
in your hands, heavy feet, light hands, and you want to avoid losing your front wheel. So if you ride these sections by moving rearwards, you're not going to be able to ride long, steep sections with control. I go into these common errors and how to correct them much more deeply on my Patreon channel. This video is about how to ride it. So which skills do you need to ride this section and other steep sections? You need a really good riding position. I have a riding position breakdown video, which I'm going to be linking below. You need excellent brake modulation, especially trusting that front brake, not going to the thres threshold, but modulating them with feeling and finesse. And you need to be able to ride roll downs. And I also have two episodes. No, I have one episode and another tutorial about these two topics, which I will be linking for you below. So as you can see, sounds like what? You just need those? Yes. You need really refined fundamental riding skills. And then you'll build up by riding harder and harder terrain just at the verge of your comfort zone. You don't need to go beyond it. You can ride at the verge to perfect these skills. And then you'll notice that your skill level, that verge I was talking about, will start to increase by itself. And that's where control comes. That's where finesse comes. And that's what I want to show you here and today. You need to ride slow and in control first to then ride fast and in control, not the other way around. So not speed is your friend, ride fast. I'm down, I'm happy because that's not how you're going to build up the skills. That's a sure way to hit a plateau or other painful things and to stop progressing. After the last technical section, there is a short pedally section with amazing views. And then you come to the apparently Joanna, who's uh, an instructor here. I'm going to be linking her below, said this is the legendary shoot or shoot. It's a good question. C-H-U-T-E, the legendary shoot. And let's look at the, the first section, which is the roll in of it. And I want to say something really important here. Listen, scope out the line before you ride into sections, especially on double black trails. Some lines may not be rideable. So you want to put your bike to the side, walk the line, choose a line, and you want to have the skill of being able to hit the line you want, which is why you want to be able to modulate those brakes and through pressure control, keep the traction on both wheels. So right here, can you follow me? <laughs> you have several lines and some of them are easier, some of them are harder. And this is also a very subjective topic. Something that may be easy for you, may be hard for someone else. So choose a line that feels good for you and always safety before ego. If you're like, oh, no, today's not the day. It's much braver, much braver to say, I'm walking this today today is not the day then to risk something here. There are several lines down this one. You're going to follow me down one of them. Choose the one that feels right for you. And if you're pushing this, don't attempt the next one because it's looser, steeper, longer, more technical. This is the legendary shoot. It's steeper, it's looser, it's it has steps, so roll down in it. And down there, there's a corner. So if you're too fast, you're just going to go straight ahead, which is why my personal advice would be if you like yourself, if you like your body, just ride this section. If you're confident with riding sections like this slowly and in control, modulating those brakes. One more addition. There was a rider right here and he said, hey, can you give me tips to ride this? tips are not going to help you. How do you learn to ride this? You learn to ride this by practicing the skills you need here in a controlled environment before. You are not going to learn the skills you need to ride this right here, especially not if it scares you. If you are 
in the fear zone. If you are scared, you are clearly in a performance zone, not in a learning zone. I'm gonna link an interview that I had below this video where I go into more detail about learning and performance zone and I also share how learning works. This is not a learning zone if this is scaring you. So tips will not get you down this. Practice the skills you need, which are the same skills as I set up there for the other one. Roll downs, pressure control, riding position, brake modulation in a controlled environment. Then take up your skills in a more and more difficult environment. And then, only then, take it to sections that are more technical and only if they are not scaring you. If they are scaring you, be brave, walk it. It is much braver to do that than to attempt stuff here. Because you know why? Every time you're going be below, sorry, beyond your limits, you are consolidating those compensatory habits you have already. You're not progressing your writing skills. You're just learning to arrange yourself with your compensatory habits in more technical terrain until it doesn't go well anymore. I hope that makes sense. If not, drop me a line below. I'm always happy to answer this in more detail. And on my Patreon channel, I have common errors and troubleshooter tutorials. So how you can learn to correct your errors. Now let's write the section. Follow me along. After the shoot, there's actually a really gnarly switch back right here, which you're going to see Bernie ride right now. But most people, they just take the straight line because the double switchback is so technical. And this is what I'm going to show you now is how to ride the straight line with control. Oh, very nice. We both rode both and we clearly decided the straight line is the easier one, but it's also not easy. After the shoot and after the switchback, there's this section. And actually, funny enough, Tess, Dusty Betty, which I will be linking below, said that a lot of people write, hey, I cleared Highline, but they just don't show the section because we also decided that the roll down coming up is actually the hardest part. So follow me along. It's super loose, as you can see. And then there's a huge roll down. Let's look at it. It's very off camera here. It's very loose. There's like baby powder on the stones. And then down here, it's even more off camera. And today is a super windy day. So of course, if you're fast, you can drop this, but you're gonna land down here in this gnarly stuff. And we're gonna roll it because with the wind, it is too dangerous to drop it because you need to hit the line. So we're gonna roll it in control and hit the lines, keeping our brake once again, our brakes modulated, keeping a speed that is controllable, maintaining pressure control through the feet. And once again, that's all you need. You need solid fundamentals in a controlled environment first before you attempt these really technical double black diamond sections on Highline Trail. This next section is actually one of the most technical ones too, because now we're up to that point of what I was saying earlier. If you're a rider of speed is your friend, you're never gonna make that corner Watch down out there. your chain. Oh no. <laughs> so you're never gonna make that corner down there. 
or if you're grippy grabby on your brakes you never ever in this technical terrain want to open like grab let go grab let go grab that is the worst thing you can do because you're off balance all the time this for example is a common error that i see a lot which i talk much more about on my patreon channel what you want to do is you want to modulate the brakes squeeze them with finesse all the time to maintain a speed even down these rocks and then you'll be fine in that tight corner down there on these sections yes there are bigger roll downs and some of the stones are slippery so yes there may be short but really short sections where you let go of the brakes completely but then you modulate them again afterwards so you're not grabbing and letting go you're letting go and modulating them to then go back into really finely dosed braking <laughs> We are back at the car. I'm going to be describing the route we took and telling you which trails we took in the description below. Amazing ride, I love Sedona. And this one is actually one of my favorite ones because of the views. So whether you hike it or you ride it, it's absolutely stunning. Do scope out the lines before you ride them. Practice your fundamentals before you ride it and always safety before ego. It's not at all a problem to walk your bike a little bit because after all, we're all out there to have fun on our bikes. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for being here. And I hope to see you again for my next video. Goodbye from Sedona. <laughs>